days ago, World War II ended up getting some DLC added to it, and Sledgehammer introduced the long-awaited DLC weapons into the game. Even though the focus for the current events have driven away from that game and more so on to Black Ops 4 as the main focal point in the Call of Duty universe as of the last 7 to 8 months, the player base still is relatively strong there, and if you hop over to popular forums of discussion like the World War II subreddit, there are a lot of people eagerly awaiting the chance to use their saved supply drops, their caches of armory credits, and more on the new content. Now, unfortunately, it didn't unfold as many of may have hoped, with the new DLC weapons not being a part of collections and thus only in supply drops, that was the only way you could obtain the weaponry. But despite the probable invisible hand of the business side of Activision at work forcing these to be introduced in a less than ideal manner, Sledge had other plans for those that weren't so lucky with their supply drop yield, and thus Sledgehammer is showing us how it could and should be done in a way, especially given the abysmal introduction of weaponry into Black Ops 4 as of this past week. So today we're going to break down everything that was added, everything you can expect to see in the future to remedy what was initially a rocky launch of new weapons, and everything else in between. So let's get into it. Let's start at the beginning here at this one. Sledgehammer had kept the good spirits of the remaining player base throughout the days, weeks, and months of World War II after Black Ops 4's launch this past October. Even to this day, the official Reddit account ends up posting regularly, even daily replying to players and fans about general inquiries, cheering them on for cool clips that they posted, and so on and so forth. Just being a part of the down-to-earth community and being one of us, a fan of the franchise and a gamer at heart. But in terms of outreach, there's only so much that you can do when your primary year of focus is up and your attention is shifted towards your next project. That didn't stop them from initially releasing a bunch of unreleased variants that were in the game files just for the sake of releasing them. While they may not necessarily be new content, depending on who you ask, as they were in the files for a while but never public and usable to anybody in the game, they were new to the players that got them. But accompanying those announcements of more variants were the announcements of new weapons and brand new ones at that, not ones that were just in the files or anything too underwhelming like a, hey, we just forgot to drop this, so here it is. Instead, we ended up getting, on Tuesday, five new weapons across the classifications of rifles, SMGs, LMGs, and sniper rifles. They were, firstly, the KG M21 rifle, with the variants of the Checkmate Epic, Strafe 2 Heroic, Resolution Epic, and, of course, the base weapon that will be available later on organically. Then, in the SMG category, we had the Boiskovica, with the variants of the Heist Epic, the Phoenix 2 Heroic, and the Shredder Epic, along with that base coming later. Then, we had the Irma EMP SMG, with the variants of the Deathwing Epic, the Serpentine 2 Heroic, the Kiwi Epic, and the base, the LMG of the Lad Machine Gun, which, hilarious to me, is named the Mad Lad when upgraded in Zombies. That has the variants of the Decorated Epic, the Wrecking Crew 2 Heroic, the Grim Sergeant Epic, and the base, and finally, the WZ. Z35 sniper rifle was added with the pinpoint epic, extreme measures 2 heroic, corrosive epic, and the base weapon added as well. Now, these are all pretty awesome additions. There were some distant fragments of code lines indicating the Boiskovica would come, but others were all brand new and offer something for a wide array of playstyles, naturally across all four classifications covered. Rifles, SMGs, LMGs, and the sniper rifle. No secondaries or shotguns were introduced, but for deep into the second year of content support, that's to be expected, and five weapons dropped at once is something superb as is. But the catch with this was, as we mentioned in the intro of this video, that these were dropped solely in supply drops and not in collections. Now, outside of what I think is the real reason, which we'll talk about here in just a second, I think that this has to do with no collections being opened up or new collections being added. So in that regard, these weapons were the last bit of content before focus is solely shifted to the next project that seemingly is reported to be a supporting role in 2020, but that makes sense to some regard. Not saying that it's good for the player or anything, but simply out of the invisible hand of Activision, it allows them to drop new weapons without having to really focus and set aside time to create filler content content in order to make a collection fit for these weapons in particular. So I see some reason in that, but still not necessarily the best way to introduce weapons just in supply drops. But again, what I think really this comes down to is the business side of Activision pushing a heavy MTX model. And to me, this has to be it, because why else would a system that has worked tremendously well since the game's launch suddenly and abruptly change course on their model, not halfway through their year of support, but an entire year after that, a year and a half after World War II launched and almost a year out of its main primary life cycle, 
that to me just doesn't make sense. To me, this is just a last ditch effort for a little bit more revenue because otherwise in my mind, we'd see a collection, a contract, a special order, something that granted these weapons the potential of being earned organically, like you could get the rest of the weapons before them the entire time along the way of that year and a half. To me, World War II is up there with one of the better systems of the MTX model, simply because, yeah, there were supply drops, but you could get literally every single weapon and every single item just by playing the game. Apart from the new ones and I think maybe one or two weapons here and there, I had every single weapon in that game and without spending a single penny. I just saved up cases the entire operation, and then once a new operation came around, I ended up opening 150-ish supply drops of common and rare denomination, and I'd likely get at least the variants out of that. Now if I didn't, well, no real reason to fear, because I'd have collected enough armory credits throughout that month or two of grinding orders to end up getting those drops or armory credits, or the duplicates I got from the larger drops would then come in handy to allow me to straight up buy the weapons that I wanted out of collections. Save for say Winter Siege, I had just about every single weapon on day one of the new event with that method, and I didn't spend a single penny on drops or COD points. That system was great in my opinion. But again, to see that complete 180 made absolutely no sense to me. So to me, this weapon drop and how it was handled was out of Sledge's control. Not necessarily the fact that they were forced to make new weapons. I think that was something they voluntarily wanted to do for the community and give some content to those still on the game. But the way and manner in which they were introduced, I don't think that was up to them. But here's where things got great and where I truly do applaud Sledge for this. They ended up putting out an announcement up on the Reddit yesterday titled Upcoming Collections, Re-Releases, and New Weapon Contracts that said the following. The new weapons are out in the wild and available via supply drops. We are actively keeping an eye on all our social media channels to see how you feel about the release and we hear you loud and clear, friends. In the past, collections have been part of themed events consisting of a variety of gear and weapons. As of now, we do not have any plans to release new collections for World War II. The current weapons update consists purely of weapons with no additional content and were never intended for collections. Previously, newly released weapons have been offered up for contracts shortly after the release, generally about a month, and that is the plan with the new weapons. On 7-2 or July 2nd, we're dropping contracts for the new weapons. Additionally, we will briefly open all previous collections tied to timed events, for example, Winter Siege, Resistance, and so on. And weapons associated with past collections will be available for purchase with armory credits. So if you've got a ton of credits sitting around, are thinking of buying every single collection, or missing that one gun, this post is for you. As always, we're grateful for your memes, clips, feedback, and involvement in the community. Love you all, SHG. So the first and biggest thing here out of this relating to those weapons are that contracts are coming, and better late than never. If you're like me who only had a few supply drops left over, or if you're like some that I saw that spent their 250 supply drops or so, and didn't really get all that much, well, as they detailed, you'll end up having the chance to get these organically, in-game, without spending a dime. And as they detailed also, this isn't out of the ordinary all that much for other weapon drops. When newer weapons are introduced, they're usually in limbo for collections or in drops, for about a month and then after that is when we end up seeing what happens again here on July 2nd. Weapon contracts are introduced for those new guns. So that means on July 2nd, we'll end up seeing that probably a weekly basis, we'll see a refresh every Tuesday for a new weapon of these new drops. And maybe even we see them rotate out so the five weapons are doubled up on. So maybe the next 10 weeks after that, we end up seeing those new weapons being the contracts available to grind out. But even while maybe planned from the beginning, it was great to see them address it and get out in front of it because I'm sure there are some ramblings that you saw on any of the social medias you may have where people are upset that they were only in supply drops and that's the biggest thing to me they addressed it they addressed it head on and took it and explained everything and truth be told that is honestly all I really want from Treyarch and Black Ops 4. I want to know when new content is going to be able to come, when these things will be happening in terms of where they're going to be shifted, whether they're in reserves only, which is absolute garbage like we've covered many times here, or if they're going to have an organic way to unlock them at some point. I just want to know, man. I feel like that's the thing with Black Ops 4 is that literally every single problem that could be had could be avoided in some way, shape, or form, and simple transparency can go a very, very long way. So maybe these contracts we get at the end of the month for Black Ops 4 end up introducing ways to organically unlock every single weapon that was introduced within the reserves out of a grind of some sorts, but until then, it's literally just, we don't know.
And that's where I hugely applaud Sledgehammer because they saw a problem. They saw an issue that especially stemmed with how things went down for Black Ops 4 yesterday. They saw that people are thinking, wow, even World War II is doing it this way. This is absolute garbage and both are terrible. But they got ahead of that and they said, hey, even though it's not going to be available just yet, coming up very soon, we're going to have organic ways that if you didn't get this, don't worry, you can end up doing it. And even if on the Black Ops 4 side of things, it doesn't happen, which god it needs to happen that's another point in the column for sledgehammer because they're offering things organically they're offering ways that you don't have to open up your wallet but if you really want that thing and you have no way to wait off for it you can end up putting disposable income to it it's the matter of the choice there is no choice in black ops 4 but there is choice in world war 2 and that is one of the biggest things coming back to that whole discussion about how world war 2 handled its dlc it just has the options there. Something that Black Ops 4 does not, it forces that hand to pretty much funnel you to end up buying supply drops because unless you wanna waste every single hour of your day grinding out tiers for at the most 48 reserve cases, 49 if you end up having your daily tier skip in your past tier 50, if you wanna grind for a chance of 49 duplicates with one single item each time, well, your odds are slim to none. So the only way to literally increase those odds are to buy supply drops that offer you 66% more items per supply drop. World War II never did that. And even to this day, whenever something is presented to them in the way of a challenging release of new weapons, they were transparent and handled it with, dare I say, even grace. While there is that month of downtime where it's only in supply drops, at least we know that there's going to be a way to organically get them without spending a single penny. I applaud you big time, Sledgehammer, and I'm looking forward to jumping on and grinding out those weapon contracts whenever the time does come. Black Ops 4, Treyarch, I'm really looking at you now for this one. Balls in your court. I definitely think that contracts at the end of the month have to be something big and... I'm really hoping you end up putting in a contract for all those weapons added in. There needs to be something that changes. There needs to be something that doesn't push players away every single update. And so again, thank you, Sledgehammer, for making the best of a situation that went kind of awry, but also keeping it real with us. That said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I want to give you guys the rundown of the new DLC and the update within World War II, but also let you guys know about how things were handled in a much better fashion. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you guys happy that we'll see contracts here for World War II? Are you guys going to jump on and check them out when the time comes? Did you get any of the weapons already? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and want to stay in with all things Call of Duty. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram as well if you guys want to stay connected and get in touch a little bit further outside of youtube and until next time thanks so much for watching mine is the express i'll see you guys later take care and peace